Matt Roberts with Athletic Director U, excited to be joined by Max Wessel and Vin McCaffrey from Game Plan, Chairman of the Board, CEO. You guys are the first folks to visit us here in Louisville for a full Athletic Director U video. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank Thanks you for having us. The context of our conversation today, it's been about a year, a little over a year since the Game Plan NX Athlete merger. We're going to talk about that. Contextually, in terms of where the marketplace is going and solutions you guys provide, crucial, what's coming up for our industry and the hurdles that are out there. A lot of really challenging, uh, interesting inflection points, opportunities for the administrative community, staying focused on the student athlete journey. We're going to cover all that and more. Let's start with reflection on the game plan in X athlete merger again 13 months ago. And Max, if you can speak to a little bit the strategy around you guys getting under the same roof and creating solutions for college athletics. Absolutely. So about 13 months ago, it was actually a little bit before that, in X athlete, you know, we had created a great solution to try and help student athletes find careers post their, their collegiate experience. Um, we had a really great software. We were having some success with a couple of universities, but we really needed to solve for the student athlete engagement side of, of the platform. We were looking at all of the industry and, and saw that game plan was doing an amazing job on the student athlete engagement side of things, which was kind of the onus for reaching out to Vin and game plan to, to see if there was an option to explore a merger and, and Vin can kind of speak to, to why that was interesting to him. But long story short is we were able to come together. We brought NX athletes software and, and expertise on the career side of things along with, you know, game plan had existing career expertise as well as, you know, the, the amazing student athlete engagement, their footprint um, within athletic departments on the, the student athlete experience side of things. You know, those two things together really created a special opportunity for us to come together. Also, we were very aligned from a mission perspective. You know, Vin and his team were, were very similar in how they thought about the industry, what we were trying to achieve for the student athlete experience, how we really were trying to keep the student athlete and the student athletes needs uh, top of mind um, in every business decision we make. So that's kind of the, the background of why the merger happened. And, and student athlete experience, student athlete journey outcomes has been key to your all's business for a number of years. Yep. Vin, you guys have created some really key indices and opportunities within a software environment for this experience for hundreds of athletic departments out there. Why the mashup with NX Athlete? How did this complete some of the offering? Yeah. You know, so when we started, the admission was very similar to what an ex-athlete was. It was helping a college athlete move towards a job, you know, success into life after sports. And as we were continuing to grow, what we realized is we were building a real software business primarily around education. And we never lost track of the idea of helping an athlete move into the transition, into the, the approach into life after sports. So when Max and team approached us, we thought, wow, it's the like, same mission, and now's the perfect time. Um, and then through the last year, the growth story has been really significant, uh, and that's been exciting. Um, but that being said, it, it comes back to we think this journey of the athlete is critical, as opposed to solving for just this transactional need of helping an athlete get a job. We're solving for the entire journey of the athlete. I think that's what pays, puts game plan in such a unique place, because we do see an athlete as he transition on campus. They're four or five years on campus, well into life after sport. Um, it's a unique value proposition that we have today. Absolutely. The, the other important deal that's happened in the last 12 to 14 months is Athlete Viewpoint became part of the family as well. Another set of experiential data, right, from an student, individual student athlete uh, standpoint, their experience with a team, within a department, with particular coaches, why was that so key? Yeah, when we look at the highway of the journey of the athlete, uh, there's certain key areas that we focus in on the student athlete experience. And what we saw from Athlete Viewpoint was they're the leader in providing key survey data points associated with the athlete experience. And we looked at that and said, if we're educated and working with an athlete throughout their time on campus, if we can bring that into a real-time feedback situation with those campus partners, it's really significant. But most importantly for us, we wanted to be able to get to a place where we had voice of the athlete in a very significant way, in a real-time way. Uh, and that's been fantastic. So the missions lined up very similar to what NX Athlete and Game Plan had. And then as the, the Athlete Viewpoint team came in, uh, and the product integration, the team integration, the market integration, most importantly, has been fantastic, yeah. And what's coming up? There was just an announcement out there about another addition. Why was Athlete Book key to this 
sort of roadmap as well, Max? Yeah, so strategic initiatives, like Vin said, right away after the merger, we wanted to really expand on the student athlete experience, student athlete journey, athlete viewpoint was a great way to do it. Our next strategic initiative was to continue to expand our footprint on the career development um, and, and our, our touch points with employers and brands who want to, to interact with the student athlete. Athlete Book was a natural choice there. So we're really excited about our acquisition of, of Athlete Book and how we can and leverage that to expand our footprint with employers and brands who really um, understand why student athletes make great employees and just want to have insight and interact with the student athletes um, through our platform. Ironically, we're having this conversation at a time when the men's basketball head coaching carousel is really going to begin in earnest. We're right before the conference tournament season. Anytime a new coaching staff is hired, you have a lot of team and organizational dynamics with new coaches coming in, existing student athletes, no different than new executives coming in and existing employees. How has the onboarding and the synergy gone with each of these different companies sort of becoming one then? Yeah, we joke, uh, we could have been the Brady Bunch through this whole piece. When you think about post NX athlete, the merge that occurred there, athlete viewpoint coming in, now the athlete book coming in. But it's really been seamless. Like, uh, like through this whole time period as a business, we grew over 130% last year. So there's been massive amounts of distraction, but just you know, ultimate focus by all the team members on the job at hand. And it's been great. So from that perspective, our culture is rock solid. And that's been awesome to watch, not just the growth story externally, but internally. Uh, everyone's gotten better through this and it's been a great experience. Yeah. So no, I couldn't say enough great things about all the organizations coming together. Max, internal growth with some of these deals, headcount has increased, I've got to imagine, so I'm curious of those numbers. And then given the type of company you are trying to monitor the student athlete journey, former student athletes, I think, are part of this, got to be part of this equation from a personnel standpoint, right? Absolutely. So February 2021, immediately post an ex-athlete game plan merger, we were at full, 14 full-time employees. Today, we're sitting at 33 full-time employees. So you know, we've more than doubled the team. There's been massive growth, like Ben said, externally over 130% growth this year, which means internally there had to be massive growth. And, and like you said, part of, um, part of that growth and part of uh, ensuring that everyone fit and Ben can get into that more was having a lot of student athletes on board. And now today, more than two thirds of our team is student athletes. Everyone um, we hire and interview, we we like to prioritize student athletes. Sure. Vin and I, both Lehigh student athletes ourselves. So, sure. yeah. And then Vin, as a CEO every day, you all grew in a time where virtual workforce was common, whether it's in private business or in the athletic department arena. You have some folks in North Carolina, you got a lot more dispersed throughout the nation. How do you ensure fit? How did you handle onboarding? Culture's a key issue for everybody in the organizational world. Mm -hmm. How do you look through that lens? Yeah, because as you said, we've NX Athlete came together, uh, Athlete Viewpoint, now Athlete Book. So not just organizationally merging, but we've hired uh, successfully uh, through the year as well. So we, I don't know if we have it figured out. I would say the first things first. Nobody like, we don't, yeah. we yeah, don't nobody have it figured out. Yeah. Uh, but at that point, like the, the model that we put through is, do you understand our mission? Do you buy our mission? Um, can you articulate that? Is it really deep down in you? Because if not, you could be the best person in the world for this position, but if you're not in on the mission, like times are going to get hard and what we do is hard and it's probably not the right fit. We don't dislike you, but you might not be the right person for us. So that's one. Two, it's trust. Uh, you could be the best person in the fit and you might actually buy into mission, but if for some reason we pick up, there's a sense of distrust. So if we can't trust you, particularly in an environment where we're, we're going through a massive growth phase, we're not seeing you every day. Mm. Like we're remote, we're virtual. We have to be able to trust that work's going to be done. It's just crucial to the culture, and then it's fit. So we get to fit last, to be honest. Like so, if you can pass through our gates, that's really critical. And from that standpoint, we feel really good about the team. Uh, the the fit in terms of what the work that's being done. Every position's slightly different, but the mission remains the same. And I can tell you across the board. Everyone comes at that one very differently. We're really diverse from that standpoint, not just on how we look, but how we think. And, and that's made us a lot better. Um, that's not easy. And anybody who says it is, I'd like to have that conversation because <laughs> right. I'm looking at it wrong. Right. But it, it challenges thought every minute. And, and you know, as a startup CEO, Max has been fantastic with this. As a chairman, you wear a lot of different hats. 
uh, and sometimes that's revenue driven. Sometimes more and more it's culture driven for us. And and Max has been participating with this with us. So we're building it t together. But what you realize is you just set the tone. Um, culture in our mind is the sum of everyone's activities. So from that standpoint, can we trust you at five o'clock on a Friday when that has to get done? What happens? We're not seeing you in the office. You're working remotely, and that's this trust aspect. So it's an everyday thing. Uh, it's an every hour thing from, a, from that standpoint. Fortunately, our team is really communicative. Um, they come from the aspect of that they over communicate certain situations. Mm -hmm. um, when in doubt, over communicate. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's been really valuable. Um, we don't have it figured out. Uh, we're still coming together. There's some folks on our team, I haven't met them personally yet, you know, as we're going through the interview process, because it's gone so quick. But, but those relationships are there, we can feel that. And so we feel good about our culture, long way to go. Um, but we're doing the right thing. I, I'm sharing that because like, we also step back and we look at what's going on in college athletics, mm -hmm. the amount that's being thrown at some of the administration and the changes that are occurring there. And oh, by the way, your budget just got cut. Like, how do you handle that? It's not easy. So, so we're, we think in the, kind of the same vein, different circumstances, but very similar thought processes. So we're excited. The team's awesome. Um, you know, I couldn't be been doing this for a few years now. And like, I've never been more excited but where we're going, um, and that's just the team, like the energy associated with that's off the charts. Um, so it's been fun, it's been really fun. What about growth, size, let's talk numbers. Number of clients, we wanna talk about the pro leagues as well and the learnings on how it trickles to college athletics, but how many schools and departments are you working with now? Yeah, we have over 300 uh, four-year colleges working with Game Plan. Uh, every national junior college is on Game Plan. And what you're referring to with our experience in the pro professional athletics has been significant. Uh, the NBA, the NFL, now Major League Baseball, the NHL. Uh, and again, I know we're focused in having this discussion around college athletics, but the education experience we are learning from professional athletics and bringing that down, because they're dealing with some of the major challenges as well. Like? And, like such as sports wagering, yeah. as an example. Rules education, which college athletics departments would refer to compliance-based education, an area that we're really good at. Uh, the ability to provide trackable education is a critical aspect of where college athletics is going. Yeah, I think those learnings and how they trickle and, and down isn't even the right, you know, the right mm -hmm. direction. Um, but there's valuable insights that derive from those relationships that the college athletics marketplace <clears throat> can benefit. And, and I've got to imagine in the other direction too, right? Yeah, I think so both ways. I mean, I think the mission of the college athletics department has always been squared on helping an athlete not just serve on time on campus, but life after sport. You're seeing professional leagues do a fantastic job on their transitions to, away from sport as well. So, so I think it's interesting. And we're in a really unique circumstance because we're able to see the athlete from 18, 19. We have professional leagues now that are investing into the college athletics experience. Just as an example, um, our partnership with the NFL not only works with the rookies and, and the, the existing veteran teams and, and even those that are going into life after sport, uh, they've made an investment where there's over 30 learning courses made available for college football players preparing to go play college football, but also to make the transition prospectively to the NFL, but all the life skill experiences that, that are come through that as well. So it's been a fantastic experience. So it is collaborative. It's, mm -hmm. it's one that goes back and forth from both professional to college and college professional. Uh, uh, go ahead. Max. Yeah, yeah, I think it really speaks to um, both in the professional leagues and in college athletics is no longer is, um, you know, if you, if you have to do um, a sports wagering, education is going and sitting in a classroom and listening to an expert, that, that will cover a lot of it, but you're not getting the insight and the, the sentiment that you can see when, when you use our platform. So whether it's in college athletics or in professional athletics, whatever problems or challenges they're facing, you know, our platform really gives the ability to, to get more than just a checkbox. Sure, you know, it's a sure. lot more insight and sentiment and you know, you can, you can really understand where your athletes are on the topic rather than did they, were they present during a presentation? We all three were student athletes, Max most recently, yep. been, not to date <laughs> us, but the opportunity to not have to sit in a classroom anymore for this continuous learning. Mm -hmm. Vin and I had to go to our compliance workshop every year and well, sign off on I the paper. I did too. Okay, so yeah. you did too. Um, the modern day student athlete and the amount of time they spend on a screen Let's dig through why it's so important that this curriculum is delivered that way and can also be measured that way. Yeah. I think you hit the nail on the head there in terms of where they're focused. Um, I, th I would go one step further. One of the things that we've seen in, in athletics, I think as in society, but definitely in, in, 
in higher education, corporate America, and so forth, is there's a proliferation of, of technology out there. Some would say it's like a platform fatigue. Yeah. What we've seen within our experience with the athlete is if you ask them to go to one place, they'll go. If you ask them to go to two places, they'll go to both. If you ask them to go to three places, they won't go to any. So if you're able to streamline that experience so that education's in one place, and even if even step beyond that, like specific forms of education, compliance education, life skill education, you're gonna see game plan getting into the upskilling space. Like, so all of those areas in one place, it's streamlined. The student athlete is there. And so that we're bringing all that directly to them, but in a fashion that fits their day, their experience on campus, which is really important because the engagement factor is critical. Taking a step further, we don't want to just live in the uh, check the box world. Mm -hmm. We measure comprehension. Yeah. We're measuring sentiment. The beauty of athlete viewpoint being integrated into our platform, we can get a direct pulse from the athlete, how they feel about certain subject matters, where there's gaps associated with the types of education that they would like to be able to see. It's really critical from that standpoint. So although education leads in the learning front, it's, you just can't have one without the other. You have to get a, a real good sense for what the athlete's seeking. You use the term in that fashion, yeah. which in that fashion to me says efficient yet effective curriculum. How, how does that balance work internally when you all are creating this curriculum to make sure that the bite size is effective for that everyday life of that student yeah. athlete? Well, it's a win-win it's a scenario because the student athlete's happier. They don't have to go sit in the lecture hall like we had to. And you know, that was a, no one enjoys that. Um, and then you know, we were all student athletes, so we understand when we're building these curriculums what is going to capture the student athlete's attention. We work with great subject matter experts who uh, know better than us how to portray the information. We know how to speak with a student athlete. You know, kind of all those things coming together really give us bite-sized modules that, that don't lose a student athlete's attention. And at the same time, give an athletics administration or a professional league much more insight than you would have if, if, if everyone just went and sat in a lecture right. hall. Yeah. Right. Max hit the nail on the head. The subject matter expertise is critical. Mm -hmm. We're not the end-all be-all from the content standpoint. But when you're performing 2,000 plus learning courses a day in our platform, you've got a pretty good distribution at that sure. point in time yeah. from college and pro athletes. So those subject matter experts, the partnerships that we're forming there that will allow them to educate and help athletes learn on the platform, massive, right? And it's not limiting to game plans knowledge aspect. It's, it's expanded past that to be able to, to touch across all the key themes that we're seeing in athletics. And athletics is changing in front of our eyes. And so from that standpoint, like that's not slowing down anytime soon. So we feel like having the distribution model in place and the technology in place, allowing us then to plug in the different subject matter experts, that's the, that's the winning formula. So corporations themselves are going to help build this expert curriculum. Yeah, that's right. So one of the things that we learned with our relationship and partnership with Wells Fargo, they are an expert in financial literacy. And we've seen that work with athletes across the board. So then we were working towards what are these skills gaps that we're seeing with the student athletes? We're addressing that with the game plan academies. How do we then leverage and build relationships with the athlete directly with an employer, with a brand? And from that standpoint, it's through industry focus. So if we're teaching certain aspects of a, of a business skill, then bring in certain partners that represent those industries to begin networking directly with the athlete as they're actually going through those skill building academies. That's the idea. So this idea of company, corporation, partner as the expert can be applied elsewhere on the yeah, platform? Yeah, it's, it's applied across the entire platform. A great example would be Interactive Brokers is the subject matter as, expert for our investment education. Who better to to educate student athletes about investing than, than Interactive Brokers, who is the, the largest prime brokerage app in the world. There's more securities traded on Interactive Brokers than any other uh, brokerage app out there. So Interactive Brokers wants to help us deliver education to student athletes about investing smart, how, how to invest, what is a brokerage account. You know, those are the kind of things that student athletes can learn from a subject matter expert um, in the professional world like Interactive Brokers. In addition to that, the athlete book acquisition has allowed us to really expand our footprint on virtual career events as well. So now we're not gonna only be taking uh, employers, brands, corporations to the student athletes through education and jobs, but also through virtual career events where student athletes can interact real live time with the uh, employers at Interactive Brokers, with 
learn, maybe even learn a little bit from like CEOs of these Fortune 500 companies, Tomas Pederfi, individuals like that, who really have an unbelievable understanding of how to be successful in the, the business world. And, and student athletes can have real lifetime conversations with them. Yeah. And the value, Matt, is athletes in there already. Mm -hmm. They're already in our app because they started with compliance-based education, they're working through survey, they're learning about investment education, now they're getting a job in the investment field. It's all there in one place. We talk curriculum, let's go back to careers for a second, Max. Yeah. This has sort of felt like one of the holy grails in college athletics, of if you can really measure outcomes right. and make it seamless for student athletes, how much closer do you feel like you guys are today with a turnkey solution for literally thousands of graduating student athletes this semester, this spring, and moving forward to create an opportunity for them to understand what their career opportunities are in a seamless fashion. Yeah, we're there. You know, if a student athlete, if we work with a, an institution and they use game plan and they use the whole game plan platform, meaning the game plan learning and careers, uh, we're there. You're going to be able to follow a student athlete as a freshman as they come in, understand what they're interested in, they can do our assessment inventories. Um, you're going to be able to follow a student athlete throughout their journey and then have them interact with the employers you want them to interact with and then see what, what their outcome was and track all of that in, in one place. Yeah. So we're, we're there today um, and now it's just a matter of getting a lot of uh, engagement on the career side, which is happening and has happened over the last year. One, one thing we debate in this office from time to time is, is there a day where an AD search occurs and that AD can say definitively, in my six years at X institution, this specific percentage of student athletes had a career opportunity within six months of graduation. It's really hard. It feels a bit hard to measure right now, right. but the connection point is, is part of that whole right. solution. And that was what, you know, when we approached game plan part of what we were trying to solve was that student athlete engagement because ultimately in order to track career data accurately you need willing participation from the student athlete yeah uh, game plan had solved the willing participation equation yeah. an ex-athlete plugs into it now you have a, a willing participant in the student athlete who's using the platform for everything not just careers but having careers be at one of those verticals now you can start to accurately track outcomes. The, the tangible nature of the student athlete experience, which for those of us who have had it, I think we immediately recognize, and for administrators in the space, coaches in the space, even if they weren't student athletes themselves, like this is an incredibly valuable time of your life mm -hmm. that provides you skills that are necessary for the next phase of your life. But it is sort of, the measurement is, Am I matriculating to grad school? Am I matriculating to a job? So understanding how that piece is a solution of what you all provide, I think is crucial for the industry going forward. Don't disagree. But it's unclear for an athlete going through it the is. experience. It is, Because yeah. they don't have the benefit of the 2020 hindsight. One of the reasons why you're gonna see the Game Plan Academies launch this summer focused on upscaling is because we see a clear gap of a skill set transitioning truly into the professional world. Not professional athletics, but professional work. We want to address that. If the athlete's already in game plan, going through compliance education, looking at job opportunities, we're the perfect fit to be able to then begin to work on the upskilling aspect of the athlete as well, which is significant for us. Well, let's dig in there a little bit. You've mentioned it. What's that look like if I'm on the athletic department side? Yeah, so as, as those 300 plus athletics departments and then scaling rapidly, uh, we'll work with game plan as part of that subscription. This summer, they can envision working with game plan to be able to work in a three-phase role with the Game Plan Academies, focus in on the fundamentals of certain key business skills, understanding the industries associated with those, beginning to interact with employers in those industries in the way of almost like talent as a pipeline hmm. or pipeline as a service to be able to work with certain employers who are seeking not just the athlete, but that athlete with a certain set of skills. So we're gonna deliver that on Game Plan. We see that as a gap. We picked up that throughout the year. Um, so we're able, as Max said, we're delivering it. But we're not, we're not done. We're, we're going to the next yeah. level there. Yeah. I think and that's another win-win scenario. It's a win for the student athlete because they can better understand where they're going to find success, what best fits them. And the employers, they really do want you know, to uh, a B2B SaaS role, they, a B2B sales in SaaS, yeah, yeah. software as a service. Yep. Uh, those kind of companies are going to want a student athlete who really understands what that is, has gone through academy. They're going to actually be a subject matter expert 
um, the employers will be subject matter experts in these upscaling courses. So it really is a win-win for the employers and student athletes. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, thinking you're sort of talking toward, hey, here's our roadmap. Mm -hmm. The challenges in college athletics right now yeah. are numerous, but let's just mention a few. Transfer portal, NIL, is it a challenge? Yeah, it's probably a challenge for us to get our head around. It's an opportunity for student athletes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Sports gambling, sports wagering, the Austin outcome. How do these blips on the roadmap of college athletics impact how you all think about product and where the company is going? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the challenge is the pace of change that this is all coming at. And, and if you're an athletics administrator, uh, it's not as if your day job got any easier, right? And in fact, you can argue that we've seen we've seen a mass exodus of, of administrators moving on to the next phase of, of their career. And so athletics departments are in a sense forced to do a lot more with less. And so when you think of Austin and you think of NIL and you think of the transfer portal, all those things are, they're not blips, they're fundamental shifts that mm -hmm. are occurring. Um, and I don't think we're done. Like I think we're, when you start to, to look and hear about you know, how are we gonna classify a student athlete? Are they a future employee? What's the implications associated with this unionization? So when we think about all of those things, we think game plans in a really unique experience. And it goes all the way back to 13 months ago when we, our thesis of an ex-athlete and game plan coming together, we focused on the journey of the athlete. If we, not to say that's noise, it's not noise. It's, it's clear challenge associated with an athletic administrator. But the more we focus on the athlete experience, the better we get. And so as we focus in on how's a high school student athlete transition to become a college student athlete, what's that experience on campus? Mm -hmm. How do I prepare that young person for the next phase in their life? All of those critical things that are just fundamental that sometimes are getting lost between the cracks because there are really, really big things happening in college athletics. That's where game plan comes in. That's where the partnership between us and campus kicks in. Uh, and, it's, and it's really, and from that standpoint, we think, it's timely, right? And so that's the significance associated with the change, but, but it hasn't changed our business model. It just helped us really to kind of focus what our, you know, what our approach, where our investments are. Two things there, and this is not a recruiting pitch for you, but some of the talent exodus from the industry is actually probably an opportunity for you to hire some folks who understand mm -hmm. on the department side what this journey feels like and looks like for student athletes, how to measure it better. Mm -hmm. But we also have this situation where departments have to do more with less now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So a solution that can help them if they have reduced headcount either voluntarily or involuntarily, they are going to need the tools to still deliver a lot of tangible value to student athletes. Yeah. Yeah. To the, your first question or point, um, we just hired three people from campus in the last 30 days. Um, we think those experiences are absolutely fundamental to us. The mission aligns, but we don't we haven't had those experiences. Max and I never worked on campus. So by bringing folks into our family, it just helps open our eyes to how to solve those big challenges. Um, and that becomes part of the culture. There's no difference how they're thinking. They're all focused on the student athletes. Sure. That's why they got yeah. in that college athletics in the first place. It's just a different way to approach it now. Uh, they just work with a few more athletes than they did while they were on campus. So we've noted the challenge from a talent standpoint and some folks leaving college athletics Departments have potentially less bandwidth, less manpower. How do we ensure the voice of the student athlete is still captured? Yeah, so we really see that as a key issue right now is continuing to make sure not only that we're understanding the voice of the student athlete, but we're, we're actually understanding it better. And we're getting more insight than we were before because there are all these things going on around college athletics, and NIL, sports wagering, all the things we've touched on. Um, and, and Game Plan has so many product offerings from survey, e-learning, uh, careers, you know, we, can, we have a lot of touch points within an athletic department, so what it really boils down to is you know, Game Plan is uh, the app, the platform for understanding the voice of the athlete. And we see it through three primary verticals. You have learning, you have careers, and then you have insights. And that insights part is what we're providing as feedback back to an athletics department or to a professional league, a team and we're really helping them understand through all of our different product features, through all of our different touch points within an administration or within an, an, a team, how is the student athlete doing? What are their sentiments in this? Um, you know, Vin touched on it, that career is one of the most important topics of student athletes, and it's not because they don't, you know, actually, the, you know, if you probably ranked them one through five, social justice, NIL, understanding those things are probably one and two, but they have a lot of 
insight there. There's a lot of information being given, careers kind of being neglected a little bit. Things like that, if you can learn um, through our platform, it'll help you know, really deliver a better student athlete experience. We noted a number of the really high profile challenges and fundamental changes that are occurring throughout the industry, but let's dig, on, dig in on one specifically that's had some major headlines this week, and that's sports gambling. Not only in some ways, Vin, is it an economic opportunity in states that are legalized for the athletic department, potentially through their multimedia rights holder and otherwise, but clearly it creates a lot of angst for the administrative community on how student athletes are engaging on that piece. Let's dig in on sports wagering. Yeah, let's. Well, um, you know, we've seen through the fall a number of, of programs begin to embrace sports wagering on campus, and as you mentioned, the economic benefits. But it is a delicate balance. Uh, there's an ecosystem being built rapidly, and that's always a concern: the speed of it's, uh, that it's working through. But what we were seeing is 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 twofold. One, this this clear need for rules education. We learned a lot of that from professional athletics and helping individuals understand the different rules. And so we want to bring that same educational form to college athletics. And we've been doing that for the last several years and many conferences and schools have already embraced it. We want to increase that. Uh, and I'll, I'll share with you in a minute how we're going to do that. But the second piece that we've seen as the, the bigger opportunity, as different sports books come on campus and work with athletics departments, we think it's also critically important to begin treating the student athletes like an adult. Help them understand what the ecosystem of sports wagering is as it relates to college athletics, what are the career opportunities? It's the fastest growing segment in all mm -hmm. of athletics. There's careers fascinating, popping right? up right. In, yeah. in, in sports wagering. So what's that look like? Uh, and helping them understand that at a real germane level. That's, that's how we view our, uh, this, this education that's coming through as we speak. Uh, we've just secured a very strategic partnership uh, that will allow game plan now to scale to every school in the country to be able to help them not just address the rules education, but to help the athletes understand more about this ecosystem. Mm -hmm. It's that one-two punch that we feel so very good about. What is the long-term value of having data around this student-athlete journey in all the different intersection points for the overall company? Mac, Mac speak specifically, if you will, to, to athlete viewpoint. This is like competitive, experiential, program-specific data and how that's a rich understanding of how their experience is sort of trending. Right, so what Athlete Viewpoint allowed us to do is we had the learning, so we were understanding you know, uh, student athletes' uh, sentiment around specific topics we were delivering learning on. But Athlete Viewpoint has allowed us to interact with the student athlete on, on any topic, especially topics that are related to campus. So how are they enjoying their sport? How are the coaches, you know, the mandatory NCAA exit survey? So we're really not only understanding the student athlete in very specific silos um, where we did our e-learning, but we're understanding the student athlete you know, experience in general. This allows us to mold and transform our platform in a way that better fits the student athlete experience. It gives us data that is really important uh, for, for obviously for athletics administrations. We can work with them and we can work with them to um, you know, better understand their own student athletes. And it also helps us on the employment and career side of things understand what a student athlete wants to do, how they want to, um, are they even looking at it? You know, a survey might be as simple as, are you considering life after sport sure. to a, you know, a, a rising senior? Mm -hmm. Most of the time the answer is no. Okay, here's how you're going to, uh, here's your pathway to understand that better. You know, so it really allows us to, to mold and shift the platform to better serve the student athlete and the administrations we work with. Yeah. Did you ever think of like how Gallup impacts policy change in Washington, D.C., all that insight? that they're gathering from the public and that's be able to fed back to the policymakers, government. Um, we think it's the same thing. Yeah. We're able yeah. to gather all that inside information. It's not just one student athlete, one program. No. Now there's a you can benchmark, you can yeah. see a whole different perspective. And let's be honest, like it, it's not a one size fits all in college athletics anymore. So we yeah. want to be able to get to different levels so that it's, it's an approach that is, it doesn't feel generic any longer. Yeah. And, it's, and let's just get out of the anecdotal, put information in the hands of a decision maker that helps them make really informed decisions. Is there a specific use case you can like think of or an exact example of <laughs> this collection of data at scale and how it could affect policy? Yeah, for sure. So as, as we work with the Athlete Viewpoint team and the integrations coming in, one of the things that is just resounding the more and more I think about it, over the last year and a half, two years, even three, 
We've seen an unbelievable job on campus to increase the amount of education focused on diversity, inclusion, equity. Uh, we see a great movement around social justice. We see mental wellness being a key aspect. The number one, and it's not even close, the number one gap that athletes are asking for because they feel that they're getting adequate amounts of information on the other areas is career. Mm -hmm. so, so what are we doing to address that, right? Does, does anybody know that that's actually on the mind of the athlete? Yeah. We want to bring that to light. But as you hear, like we're building the solution also to say we're addressing some of those gaps behind the scenes. Sure. Our, our intention of sitting down was the synergy of it's been a year since the merger occurred. There's been other interesting deals that have happened that have added to the company's capabilities and team. It's a super challenging time. <clears throat> I mentioned the word blip. You said, hey, these aren't blips. These are fundamental changes. Yeah. You're right about that. When we sit down a year from now, what do you guys want to have achieved to continue adding value to this student athlete journey? Yeah, I think going forward, we just want to continue to understand the student athletes' needs in this changing environment, you know, with these fundamental shifts. If we need to move the product, you know, Vin can speak more directly to, to exactly what that looks like, but just continuing to um, change the product to best serve the student athlete experience, <clears throat> serve athletics uh, administrators and administrations best we can, and then provide student athletes with an opportunity uh, to flourish in life after sport. Yeah, yeah. We, what Max said, I mean, we see ourselves as a champion of the athlete. We want to see the student athlete through their journey, and that is educate them more fully, provide career opportunities, help them with their transition. And what it also means, let's work with their front line. Let's work with the administrators and coaches that are working with the student athlete to help them understand what that student athlete experience is today. It's a lot different than when I graduated Lehigh in the 90s. Uh, and, and so from that perspective, if we can bring that insight through the form of learning to an administrator, to a coach, that's incredibly valuable to the athlete experience as well. So we, we see this as, as our role, right? We wanna see the athlete through the journey, but we understand the stakeholders. Those are partnerships that we can help with. Yeah. Amid all of the media narrative of where this space is going, the one thing that we comment frequently among our group of, and our team is not losing sight of what that student athlete journey is like and these are real lives being improved and tangibly affected by the journey so i will look forward to catching up again down the road to see how that's going for you guys